Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating the square root of x squared minus 2x, with respect to x, of course. So, to solve this problem, I'm going to complete the square. So, let's start with x squared minus 2x. I'd like to write it as x squared minus 2x plus 1 to make it a perfect square and then minus 1. So, this becomes the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 1. If you do the replacement under the radical, you're going to have square root of x minus 1 squared minus 1 dx. Now, to be able to integrate this, notice that we have a radical, and inside the radical, we have something that looks like square root of x squared minus a squared. When you have an expression like this inside the radical, or in general, you can always use trigonometric substitution. For example, you can replace x with a times secant alpha. The good thing about that is that you're going to get secant squared minus 1 from here, which is equivalent to tangent alpha. So we're going to be, I mean tangent squared alpha. So we're going to be using that famous identity, which comes from the Pythagorean identity. Great. So now let's go ahead and replace, let's go ahead and replace x minus 1 with secant alpha. In this case, our a is 1 because we're subtracting 1 squared. Now, let's go ahead and isolate x because we want to find dx from here. Actually, you could do d both sides. That doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to isolate x. And then from here, dx is going to be found by differentiating the function on the right-hand side and multiplying it by d alpha. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of secant, which is kind of like a weird one, is secant alpha times tangent alpha. And then we have to multiply by d alpha. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and make the replacements. Inside the radical, we're going to have, now x minus 1 is going to be replaced with secant, so it's going to be secant squared alpha minus 1. And outside, we're going to have dx, which is secant alpha, tangent alpha, and d alpha. Okay, all this product. Now, we got everything we need, but let's go ahead and simplify inside the radical. Uh, secant squared alpha minus 1 is equal to tangent squared. So we're going to write it as tangent alpha. Of course, it needs to be positive on a certain interval, so on and so forth, so that it doesn't become negative, you know, all those kinds of things. Now, this gives us uh, a trigonometric integral, which looks, like, uh, which looks like the following. Secant alpha multiplied by tangent squared alpha d alpha. Okay, so we did get a trigonometric integral. Now we're going to solve this. In order to solve this integral, there's obviously, you know, more than one way to do it, but I'd like to turn tangent squared into secant. So let's go ahead and replace tangent squared with secant squared alpha minus 1. And, and then after that, let's go ahead and distribute. This is going to give us secant alpha to the third power, because we're going to multiply the first and second powers, minus secant alpha multiplied by d alpha. Now, I would like to uh, integrate this function, but let's go ahead and separate them. Now, the question is, how do you integrate secant cubed and how do you integrate secant alpha? Okay, I did make a video on powers of secant, so you can definitely go ahead and take a look at this video to find out what's going on, because I'm just going to share with you the results. All right, so now, the integral of secant cube alpha is just going to become one half of secant alpha tangent alpha plus one half of ln absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha. This is the integral of secant cubed and then minus the integral of secant alpha is something that you should know is ln absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha, and then obviously at the end we have to uh, add our constant c. Okay, so now these two terms are like terms, so we can go ahead and simplify them and kind of plot the, well, let's, let's do it in the next step. First, I want to simplify this. So kind of one half times something minus one times the same thing, that's going to give us negative one half times that thing, which is ln absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha plus c. So that is the result of the integral, but we gotta go ahead and go ahead and turn it into the original problem. So we're gonna go ahead and back substitute. But let's remember what we used 
for our function. We said that our assumption was x minus 1 is equal to secant alpha. So let's go ahead and draw a right triangle that satisfies this. So here's my right triangle with alpha being the angle here. And now we're going to be uh, replacing, okay, so I do need the, uh, secant alpha to equal x minus 1. Secant is reciprocal of cosine, remember that. So 1 over cosine is x minus 1, which means the hypotenuse can be x minus 1 when the adjacent is 1. And the opposite we can find from Pythagorean theorem. So let's call, go ahead and call this side y. And then from here we get y squared plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 quantity squared. y squared is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1. They're going to cancel out. And then finally, we can square root both sides, assuming that everything is positive and good and so on and so forth. y becomes this. Now, I want to be able to find tangent alpha from here because I'm going to need it. So tangent alpha is going to be y over 1, which is y. And y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 2x. Okay, so let's go ahead and back substitute here in our expression. We're going to replace secant alpha with x minus 1. And then uh, let's go ahead and write the original problem as well so you can kind of see where we come from. So our original integral was we were trying to integrate the square root of x squared minus 2x dx. And that happens to equal 1 half. And we can actually pull out the 1 half here. So we can kind of take that out. And then secant alpha, we have secant alpha here, remember? We're going to replace secant alpha with x minus 1. So it's going to be x minus 1. And then times tangent alpha, that's going to be replaced with the square root of x squared minus 2x. We found it by using the Pythagorean theorem. Minus of ln, the absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha. That's going to be the ln absolute value of x minus 1 plus the square root of x squared minus ellipses. I don't know why it's kind of messed up like that. I'll just erase it and rewrite it. x squared minus 2x. And then we're going to close the brackets because 1 half needs to be multiplied by the whole thing. And then we're going to be adding our constant. All right? So that's going to give us basically the integral of square root of x squared minus 2x dx. So now, here's one way to check your work. Now, I, I know this kind of um, this is kind of hard to believe, right? You start with a simple function, like square root of something, and then it turns into something much more complicated. Well, that's what happens with integrals a lot of the times. Uh, you start with a simple example, like differentiating is easy, but anti-differentiation is not that easy. Sometimes you don't even have an elementary function that satisfies the given conditions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.